Welcome to Deep Dive. My name is Kelly. And my name is Jesse. And this week we are going to talk to you about the housebound module in Koha. Kelly and I have recently been talking about this. We had a lot of people ask, you know, can we do outreach? How can we maintain any type of material either that we're sending out or we do really have housebound um, patrons and we want to be able to track that information. So today we're going to show you how to do that. Yeah, this the housebound module has been around for a few versions. And I think that maybe the pandemic has really started people thinking of various ways they can use this as an outreach tool. Um, so we're going to just show you a little bit about this today. We're going to you know, talk about the setup, some processes, and then reports as well. So we're, we are going to deep dive into housebound today. Yeah. So we'll start by going right into Koha administration. So the first thing you want to do, if you do want to turn this module on, um, we'll go into the housebound module system preference, and we're going to make sure that's set to enable. Now, if you want to use patron attributes to essentially track additional information than what the housebound module has to offer, then you can also enable um, extend patron attributes, and that would enable you to search, edit, and display any kind of custom attributes for a patron. So after we show you some of the options that come with it, we'll talk about some of the extended patron attributes that you may want to add in. Yeah, I, I, the one thing I can say about anything in Koha, it's very customizable. So we're going to give you a nice launching pad to what the possibilities are, and you're going to cater that to your library needs. Now, the second thing you'll probably want to do is create a patron category for your housebound patrons. So what Kelly and I did was we created a patron category called housebound, code is HB. And in here, one of the options that you have is to check for previous checkouts. Now this also ties into a system preference, which we'll speak about, but this is a nice way if you are sending titles out and you know they provide their favorite author for you, you wanna make sure that you're not sending them the same book that you just sent them two or three months ago. So this is a nice way that if you are checking things out, you can get a little pop-up. Now, Kelly, talk to us a little bit about how this system preference works. So this is actually an update in 2105. Previously, this was just a system preference that says check prev checkout, I think it's called. And this was great to say, hey, I would like to check to see if this patron has checked this item out. Unfortunately, it's just such a large system preference to turn on. You may get a lot of that if you're checking things out to your children's library, your technical services, or you really have a lot of patrons that don't want to know that information, This they evolved this system preference to say, hey, we can make this by patron category. So what we did is for this specific example, we said, unless overridden by the patron category. So we're saying, don't check everybody's, check what you have identified by patron category. So we've seen a lot incorporated into our patron category recently, like password resets and um, a lot of deviation from the system preferences, just as one more to say, I don't wanna do this for everybody, but I wanna identify a specific patron category to do this for. So now you'll notice here, we can see this check for previous checkouts and we're saying yes, and try to override the system preferences that way for housebound, if we're checking something out, we'll get the notification if, if it has checked out to them in the past. So just a really nice and easy way for you to establish a way to identify this for those patrons. And another great um, asset to creating a patron category is for reporting is yeah. to be able to say at the end of the year, we have 50 housebound patrons that we have been able to um, deliver outreach to. So it's another way to report on this information. Okay, perfect. So now let's go to an individual's account so we can show this information to you. Okay, so let's pull up William Johnson. And now when we're looking at William's account, you'll notice over here on the left-hand side, we have a new tab that is called housebound. So if we click on that, this is essentially where we're going to keep track of information. You know, how does he prefer to read or listen to material? What are 
their favorite subjects? What are their favorite authors? Um, is it a referral from another individual? You know, did this person pass on to us, hey, this is my aunt or my uncle, or, you know, this individual we know is stuck at home. Can we help them? And then the last one you'll see there is for any type of notes. So anything extra that you want to keep track of um, in the system. This, there is a current bug right now. We were just talking to one of the educators, Andrew, to expand these text boxes, because we can imagine we're going to get, want to have a little bit more information about favorite authors or subjects that we want to expand that information. So you can continue the free text, but those boxes are going to get a little larger. And then the two up top that are required are going to be delivery day and frequency. Now you can edit the frequency within your authorized values. So I'm going to pause quickly and we'll jump back over to administration. And under our basic parameters in those authorized values, you can come over to housebound frequency. So you can come in here and make changes to it. Um, so our two examples here are monthly and weekly. You know, if you want to add one in bi-monthly or bi-weekly, you know, however often you are sending things out, you can update that information. And another one I saw from another library was just paused. So if they're not really part, they want to just hold off on having deliveries, then you can add a value there to say, we're going to pause that because that's going to be all reportable and you'll be able to see that information. That's a great one. That's a great suggestion. Thanks. Okay. So now once we have that information up, the next thing you'll see down below is deliveries. And this is where you can actually add a new delivery for this individual. So you can see we have one in there now for 11, nine, um, Jesse Zaro is the chooser and the delivery is Kelly M. So you can actually have an individual who's like the selector or the chooser who goes out, grabs the, you know, favorite authors or favorite materials, you know, from the shelves. And then the deliverer is going to be the individual who takes it out. Now, if you're using a mail program, again, you could have something in here that identifies, you know, that, that individual. When you're adding a new delivery uh, method in here, you'll notice all four um, options are required. And so you're entering, you know, a date, a time, a chooser, and a deliverer. And the options on those drop downs for chooser and deliverer are housebound roles, which you will need to identify in the patron itself. And Jesse, I'm sure we'll head over there next. Yeah. So since William Johnson is our homebound patron, what I'll do is I'm going to pull up Kelly's account now since um, Kelly is our um, chooser and or deliverer. So you'll notice here now Kelly's library staff and you'll see right under that manage patron image, if you have your images turned on, we have that housebound role. So if we come in here, this is going to give two option, choose or deliver and just two radio buttons in here where you can either select, yes, they're a chooser or yes, they're a deliverer. Now those will be the options when you come in the drop down. So these can be staff, you know, in some scenarios you may have, you know, a caregiver or somebody that works at a nursing home that comes in to pick up titles and take it back to the nursing home for those individuals. So this can be any type of staff member or patron that will be either choosing or delivering these titles. Yeah, this is perfect. So you can determine who's doing one of those roles, assign those in that those accounts, and then you'll have those options to pick when you've got a new housebound patron or your rotating um, tasks within your library. So now let's go back to um, William Johnson's account. And what we'll do is we'll check some titles out to him so we can go through the process and then we'll go over to our reports so you can actually see the information there. Okay, so now we're going to check out. We know that William Johnson likes audiobooks and we know that he likes JD Rob. So, what we're going to do is we'll check one out here. We did not get notification that he has read this one before. So, we know we're, we are safe. And why don't we just grab one more here that we can send out? Um, I don't know if I've said this on the our Monday minutes or deep dive, but my grandfather is very specific in the books that he picks out or he has picked out for him. And he only wants mysteries written by women, narrated by women. So he's an audiobook fan. And so his, 
his criteria is quite specific, but both of these look like they would follow it because the narrator is a female as well. And this, this is actually really great, Kelly, that you bring up a, a perfect example of extended patron attributes. Mm-hmm. So now we could say narrated by women, men, or non-binary, give it a drop mm-hmm. down. Maybe yep. if they want to read about violence or not read about violence. Right. Cozy mystery versus not cozy mystery. Yes. Yes. Um, I just think there's a lot of like really good examples that you can tie in here. You know, do they like different languages? So do they Mm -hmm. prefer English versus Spanish or French or, you know, whatever it may be. So, you know, narrator gender. Less than 500 pages. Some people just do not want to read anything more than 300 pages. Like keep it short. Exactly. Yep. Yep. Okay. Well, perfect. So now we have two checkouts here that we're ready to send. And if we go back to the housebound um, patron, we do have this set up for a delivery. So now Kelly, should we jump into reports and show them some of the reports that they have in the system? Yeah, absolutely. So we actually went ahead and created a folder for our housebound report. So you can see we have a nice housebound folder that we have for housebound for delivery. So if we needed to just print out the housebound deliveries that were gonna happen in the next same month, as well as a list of, for choosers of, hey, these are the people that we need to choose books for, for their upcoming deliveries. And um, it gives us some great information here. Yeah, this is really great because now we can see you know, their favorite type of, of book, um, some of their favorite subjects, their favorite authors. And then most importantly on the end there, we can see past checkouts. So now we can, you know, go to the shelf, we can look for titles and we at least know what they've read in the last few months or listened to. So we don't repeat those right away without having to go back and forth to, uh, check those previous checkouts. Mm -hmm. So just a really nice way to kind of view that information first. Yeah, absolutely. So this is a nice report for your choosers. And then we created a report just to show us the next, I think 30 days that, yeah, number three, four, nine is to say, show us the next deliveries in the next month. So we're aware of what's coming and who needs to be scheduled to do a delivery. That's perfect. And then we have one last one in here for you. And that is your housebound patrons. So if we come over here, that's just going to list anyone who is set up there as a housebound patron. And then of course, completely customizable. So, you know, bringing in email, phone number, addresses, you know, any type of contact information. Oh, and another thing that was brought up for another library that was using it is they added another patron attribute could be like um, route or location. So if they're in the South part of the the, the town or the North part of the town. So then if you had a lot, then you know how to divide them up in um, sections. Why don't we just add one in here that we've talked about since we, we came up with a couple Um, let's do narrator Jerry gender, because I mean, that's a, that's a good one, but tell your, you'll have to tell your grandpa, Kelly, that, um, he helped us in our deep dive this week. Okay. I will. I won't even talk to you about his overdrive and Libby drama because as soon as <laughs> Libby, as soon as Libby ar- arrived, he was not happy. <laughs> oh, we should create an authorized value. So we have a drop down that would allow us to do male, female, or gender neutral. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Okay. Awesome. Um, but for now, we could do it as just, you know, a free text. And again, now that we've created a housebound patron, we can come in here and say, only apply this to housebound categories. Yeah. Absolutely. It's not, it could be relative to all other patron categories, but it's really just for, for our purposes. <gasps> it also could be helpful to the actual selectors that order books in the library is if they have a big demand for British narrators. I love a good British narrator, female or male, you know, um, versus when what you're looking for. Yep. All right. Well, this is great. If there are any topics that you would like to see in both Monday minutes or deep dive, please let us know. Um, we always tailor these for our listeners. Yeah. And if you're using it, please, you know, reach out and let us know how you're doing it. And because I think it'd be great to share ways that it's worked for your library. Definitely. Okay. Well, we'll see you next time. Next time. Bye-bye. Bye.